Hi, my name is Jackie Lee Price and welcome to Shadowbox. Hello! How you doing? <laughs> How are you? How are you? I'm good with Mr. Sam Leo. Did you, did you take a shower? No, not yet, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you look like you've scrubbed up just for me. I'm just, I'm getting more beautiful as I'm getting older. That, oh, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? How are you doing? I'm all right. I've just, I've just, uh, while I was waiting for you online, I just, I've just heard the news about Les Stevens from uh, Pinewood. He's passed, he's mm. passed away. No way. Yeah. Ab absolutely gobsmacked. Absolute gentleman. And wow, wow. a real, a real legend of this sport. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolute gentleman. So, yeah, a bit perplexed. I knew, I knew he was fighting and everyone was praying and, 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 and you know, wishing that he'd pull through it. Just, just like any other individual in this country and, and globally, you know, that, that has this sickening disease. So, oh, another one, another one of the legends. So, I obviously, yeah. on behalf of myself and my club and everyone else. I'd like to offer our condolences to, to, to Les, his family, and obviously to Pinewood Star, one of the best clubs in the country, full stop. So, Yeah, yeah. Um, I, know, uh, I know that Hop had a, a really good relationship with them as well. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. sorry, that's thrown me a little bit. I haven't... Uh, I, I had just just a matter of minutes ago, really. I was, I, do you know what? I was just, I was just surfing as you, as you do, and I just saw it on, on someone's feed. I thought, oh, no, and then... I haven't dwelled in too much, but then I thought, obviously, with time running out to speak to yourself. Um, yeah, so gutted, absolutely gutted. Yeah, and and, and the same from Shadow Boxer. Um, we wish them, you know, send our condolences. The, sure. the thing is, as well, isn't it, Sab? What people I don't think realise is how close, although we may you know um box or coach for different clubs we are a massively huge boxing family and the amateurs there's, there's, there's a lot of total respect especially the, the you know the old school type of coaches yeah we you know we see them in the changing room and especially when we're you know we're, we're boxing them there's that rivalry but it's a healthy rivalry you know and and you look at them across the ring and when you win or they win mm -hmm. it's that you know that game of upmanship who, who gets the better of the day but there's no amnesty. There's no nastiness. There's just it's it's a healthy it's a healthy relationship in terms of for the for the, for, for what we enjoy the most, which is which is boxing. So I'm I'm gutted because I I have looked up the Les a lot. So every time I see him, I saw him at the recent um, junior quarterfinals against London. You know, Pinewood were there with West Ham. You know, it was it was really good. He, he looked well. He looked well. So mm. gutted. Absolutely gutted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, just talking about um, sort of trying to keep positive and stuff like that. Yeah. You've been getting involved, though, haven't you, uh, with a few uh, of the challenges. The, the skip Didn't you do some sort of skipping? Does that mean we did the uh, one, one of the fathers, uh, one of uh, Darren, Darren, who's, uh, who's, whose son Mason boxes for his little Mason. Um, it, I, I didn't know anything about it. And he just said, oh, look, there's this, there's this uh, unique challenge where you know, skip, you do so many doubles and then you sort of turn to the right, throw the rope and the next so-called boxer catches it. Yeah, so we took we took part in that. We took part in a, did the toilet roll, you know, the old toilet <laughs> roll challenge. Um, then, then, uh, then spitefully, I actually asked, um, <laughs> I asked the individuals on our, on our boxing forum to look, guys, listen, there's, there's no chance of getting a haircut around here. Let's, let's just all go 0 0.5 and lower and, I think within two hours, five or six of the boys had <laughs> put their photos on, and I sort of text back and went, "Do you know what? I think, I'll keep, I think I'll keep me here now." <laughs> You're so bad. You're so but bad. Do you, know, do you know what it is, though, Jackie? There is there's such an air of positivity through this negativity in regards yeah. to the coaches, the boxers, the parents. You know, everyone's everyone's talking. It's it's, it's just a time to sit back and reflect, and mm. it just the determination there to go back as and when we can go back is just, it's going to be tenfold. And, um, mm. th th you know, I'll, I'll put my hand up and admit that towards we just finished the youth and went straight into the juniors. And then there was a show that I was matching. Then the elites to consider I was feeling within myself a little bit stale. 
mm. tired, overtired. But you know what? This, in in, and I'm not saying this in a horrible way, but it's given me a breath of fresh air. Mm. The rest, the respite, and things that I've been doing at home, um, a little bit more YouTube, studying, studying the greats, and, and things like that, and uh, sort of uh, cleaning, cleaning the loft, doing the gardening. <laughs> Things that I wouldn't get around to doing. Things that you've never done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, but things that I I wouldn't consider doing if I was working, which fortunately I'm, I'm I'm glad I'm back at work, so that's keeping my sanity. But from work, I'd go straight to boxing. So I was 24-7 all the time. But now I've done these bits and pieces. <laughs> There's no excuses now. Yeah. I've, I've done them. So I'm, I'm really sort of chomping a bit to just get back so we just follow protocol see what happens and then when as and when it comes then uh we you know we go back and obviously with the news of uh john turning over as well to mm. join the stable it's 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 just giving a, an absolute buzz within the club and as as you know jackie we sort of touched upon it briefly there's let's just say there's more where he came from you know um it's I'm I'm just pleased to be in such a position that we are on on both sides of the codes. So uh, yeah, just just looking forward to it. Let's talk about your gym, right? So okay. uh, for those that I can't imagine, there's people that don't know who you are, but just in case, your uh, your amateur boxing gym is Hoddleston. Um, you have been around forever, <laughs> um, as long as wow, yeah, you've been around for for donkey's years, um, yeah. you know, produce some amazing boxers. Just fill me in, or fill our, view, fill our viewers in with a few names that have come through your doors. Okay. Um, so, just to go right back, not to bore you, but I will, after I'd finished my allegiance in London as a boxer, and work commitments to, took over, I finished at All-Stars. But before All-Stars, I was at the great Fitzroy Lodge, under, under, exactly, under Mickey Carney, Billy Webster, you know, and we don't need to say any more about that, you know, it, absolutely. Can we, just, can we just take a moment? Okay. Okay, go <laughs> I just learned so much from a, an individual like Mick, oh. who hardly said a word. His mannerisms, his, you know, just his, his, his persona and everything. And I, my, me as a coach, I've taken snippets off, off individuals to become the coach I am today. And Mick and Billy were very influential to me in, in my... Uh, I never decided, you know, I never woke up one day and said, you know what, I'm going to be a coach. I decided mm -hmm. to be a coach to put back in what was put into me and therefore the knock-on effect. And after that, I, you know, I was a little bit lost because I had a, a little bit of a, a dispute. <laughs> I tried a few other gyms, ended up at All Stars, ended back up Stevie Palmer, who, are, you know, I think he, he is an underrated coach. Very underrated. A little bit too aggressive at times, but underrated. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> yeah, but you see, you're laughing, you're laughing because we can relate. Whereas anyone else out there watching this is thinking, who? What? So, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah. And once I couldn't do it anymore, and I knew I couldn't do it anymore, I, I was down the Trojan. And at the mm. time, the Trojan was very healthy. Stevie mm. Newland, you know, at, at Power Day Hooks now, had the... Uh, yep. I was in between Stevie and and the next group up, which was like uh, Phil Pearson and my brother Luigi. And, you know, Phil, Steve had the Kokorans, the Barretts, you know, the Mongans. Oh, brilliant boxers. Great boxers. And then the seniors there were really good as well. Francie Barrett, Coley, you know, Coleman Barrett. Uh, Dave Ogden on Dunkara, then you had like uh, Phil Pearson's son Paul, you know, youth medalist uh, at the European. So, but for me, it was the commitment of trying to get there. I just couldn't do it. Mm. It was, you know, A406 all the way there, and I wasn't mm. getting back till late, and it just wasn't beneficial. I looked for a club local to me, and um, I, I actually went into Cheson. I walked into Cheson, and um, it was, you know, it was busy, it was thriving, and I just approached Mark and just said, Mark, do you need any help? I'd like to sort of be on the other side of the ropes now. And Mark said, thanks for your interest. But, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've got the support. So Basically, do one. <laughs> yeah, nicely, yeah. So, 
Okay. Yeah. In layman yeah. terms, yeah. yeah. Go on, yeah. come on. Yeah, so I went to a club, middle of nowhere, unheard of, and it's called, it's the Haleybury Boys Club. It wasn't Haleybury Boys Boxing, it was just the Haleybury Boys Club. And it had boxing, Tuesdays and Thursdays, one hour, each, mm -hmm. each day, each evening, two nights. Went in there, saw an absolute gentleman by the name of Frank Grigg. And um, I just said, look, I've got a level one. Can you utilise me in any way? He looked up to the heavens and thought, you know, our, our prayers have been answered. And I jumped in and, and assisted a, a good coach called Brian Dawson, who was also looking after Nicky Bardal. Now, Nicky Bardal and some of them came from the very astute Ware Boys Amateur Boxing Club. Very, very well renowned. Great club. Great tradition. And um, I just, Jackie, I just, you know, I've done what I was told to do. So... Yeah. I followed suit. When he was unable to do anything, I thought, right, now I'm going to take the ball by the horns and see if I can, my way of coaching, see if I can bring any boxers in. And then it sort of went twofold, threefold. Within a year, you know, eight or nine carded boxers and so on. Mm -hmm. Different ages, different thingies. When it started picking up and then I started getting involved in matchmaking and that, first and foremost, as a coach, you've, you, you, in order to progress, you need to make the mistakes, learn from your mistakes. Yeah, that's and good. that's what I was doing, things like that. I was, I was thinking I knew what I was doing when I was matching, et cetera, et cetera, helping out, trying to arrange a show. But I just got better from the mistakes that I was making. And uh, by that, I'm not saying that um, by any means I've overmatched anyone, had them knocked out or anything like that. Far from it. Maybe the experience was just a little bit over my head more than anticipated. But saying that, it was probably listening to someone and they've actually pulled the wool over my eyes because I just wasn't in it, in my, my research into that opponent. And then, right. So who have we had through the doors in that time? We had two brothers, Ben Fowl, James Fowl, uh, between them, seven elite ABA finals, both wow. at the same weight category, but James came first. And James for me was a fantastic, uh, venture because he was someone who came with a friend called Nick, Nick Coop, who I felt was more talented. James didn't know his left from his right, up and down, left, honestly. And Nick had about, James wasn't ready. Nick sustained a, a, a nosebleed, peripheral nosebleed. Referee stopped it. I never saw the guy again. Yeah. So there's me thinking, now Nick's gone. James ain't coming back. James came back, knuckled down. He was an absolute star. Went on to uh, first season, lost in the junior ABA semi-finals to Charlie Brambat from Danson Youth, another good boxer. Heath Trutson back in the youth finals from King Fisher, another, another England international. And then he had his break in the uh, CYPs. He won Class C. Then he sustained, you know, then he got, obtained his uh, first England best against France. Boxed Sufim Tukuch, who just recently lost to uh, Josh Warrington. Yeah. So, as a probe. So, and then the following year, James won again. Then all of a sudden, the trickle started, you know, the tap, which was trickling water, now is starting to run. So, let's fast forward. Who have I had through? Have you got a pen and paper? Hey, listen. No, okay. Right then. I, I, so, I, can, I, I can keep it because I've seen some things on your wall. Go on, tell them. Don't be modest. I've no, seen no, no, no. The, the wall, the, the, the achievements on the wall. Uh, basically represent the individuals. That's not their vests. That's me out of my pocket putting up a vest up there printed to show individuals that come into the gym and think, oh, wow. Yeah. I haven't seen that before. So, okay, Billy Joe Saunders, 2006 to 2008. Um, many people questioned his, his, his commitment to the club in the sense that, no, no, even though he was there, he never had a club bout. Well, he's wrong. He won... He won the CYPs. He beat Jack Arnfield in the final. Boxed Steve O'Meara on a club show. Uh, was supposed to box Frank Bugnoli a couple of times, but they pulled out in the, jun in the juniors. And then when he became went from youth to elite, we were, we were banging the door about... Um, at the time, they had Neil Perkins and, and Joey Selkirk. Perkins was injured. Selkirk was drifting in and out. But with Bill, he was, you know, just a youth going into senior level. So what they were doing was just basically dangling the carrot in front of him, saying... Right, we'll give you an international. Let's see how you progress. Boxes against Australia, boxes against USA, and he's winning. So, in the meantime, Neil Perkins, I think, had lost another qualifier. 
and we were getting closer to the qualifiers. And then in the end, one final qualifier left. Uh, Neil, I believe, was injured. Joey Selkirk was injured. Well, you know, rolled the dice, gave it to Billy Joe. Billy Joe lost to Nurenderoff from the Belarus in the semis. But because Nurenderoff went through, qualified, Bill went into the repertoire against the Slovakian boxer and beat him. So all of a sudden, we've got our first Olympian. Um, nice. Which was great, you know, great. And then obviously, the rest of his history in terms of, well, it's not history because he's, at the moment, he's still unfinished business with, with Bill, you know, looking forward to a, a, a tasty... World, world fight against Canelo, hopefully, when all this uh, ball's over. And then we've had uh, Alfie Price, current pro, Southern Area champion. Uh, Shannon Courtney that came was, to the... That was last year, wasn't it? Um, against... Yeah, it hasn't, hasn't boxed since... since uh, well, our point in, hasn't boxed since boxing Jeff Afori. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, in the moment, in in the meantime, I think he's just negotiating which which path he chooses to walk down, be it English title or or or, or whatever. Uh, haven't touched base with him. Um, Shannon Courtney came to the club, had a handful of bouts, uh, won the Southern Area uh, belt, female belt against um, Moore from Repton, I think it was. So, so is it Lucy Lisa Moore or something from Repton? Uh no. From Repton? Yeah. Yeah, Did I think she know? works at the 12 Freeze now. I think she's there. Do you know what I was thinking you were going to say about Lucy at um, Finchley? But no. No, 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 not Lucy Murphy, no. Well, she boxed the girl from Repton, and then we went to uh, King of the Ring, and then she uh, narrowly was outpointed by um, Chloe Thomas from Wales, yeah. and then um, beat the... Uh, Smith from a uh, Sarah Smith from uh, she's Swedish, um, ranked, ranked in the top 10, and then obviously from there, Shannon moved on to Islington, and from Islington, she turned pro. Uh, yeah. more recently, Stan Stan Stanard came to us for, for, for uh, sort of six to seven months. Um, he's now turned professional, he's two and oh. Um, he was making the trip from Mansfield, you know, he was making the trip from Mansfield. We had we had uh. No, sorry, I'll correct that. Nottingham. Hamza. Hamza Mahmood, two-time ABA champion, and his cousin Faraz. They come from Bletchley. But also another shining star at the moment is with Team GB, and that's, um, that's Nico Levers. Um, he, he's, for me, he, he's an amazing talent. I'm saying things to you, Jackie, in... This is like a jigsaw puzzle. It's just trying to put them all together in terms of content, because I'm telling you that, and then all of a sudden, five minutes into this conversation, I'm going to retract and go back to, oh, yeah, you know what? I forgot so-and-so. Jordan, Jordan Reynolds. Reynolds. Jordan Reynolds, yeah. Jordan Reynolds, five years with us. Um, recently signed with MTK Global. Um, had, had, a good, had a good journey with us. Eight, three ABA finals, winning one, losing two close ones to Ben Whitaker. Team England captain, on to GB. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, now we signed with MTK. And... Um, more recently now, as in a few weeks back, S-Jam Promotions have, have obtained the signature of a very, very talented middleweight by the name of John Hedges, who will campaign at Super to start yeah. with until he grows a little bit more, if not, if that he hasn't grown enough. Yeah, and he, <laughs> He's a very, very exciting prospect. And I, I joke with his father many a time because when they started first and foremost at Bishop Stalkford, then went to Repton, um, the Manor of Groves show, Hotel, which I which I match every year for the, the sportsman's charity. Um, John was little John was like a one of the whips. So he was in and out with the gloves and he was standing we were ready to go in and I'm sort of standing looking at him and he's looking at me. He's like, You all right? I went, Yeah, I went, What are you doing wearing that tracksuit? And he's like, Ah, oh, this is the club, this is the club. I'll go, You come to me, you come to me and I'll show you what I can do with you. But that was. But then a couple of years later, you know, he walked in because it was uh, geographically speaking, we're much closer. You know, yeah. so it's just down the road from. And um, and again, the you know the journey. So when I, when these guys come in, I, I sort of I screen them, Jackie. It's a case of are you here just for the ride, are you here just for the glory, or are you yeah. here really for this for this for this journey? You know, and those that have sustained the journey have gone on to you know better things. At the moment, the current pros. Either with they're with me or they're not with me. You've got Ginger, you've got Jamie Robinson, you've got George Mitchell, you've got uh, Inda Bassey, 
You know, mm-hmm. Shannon Courtney, John Hedges, Jordan Reynolds, Billy Joe Saunders, Alfie Price, Fatir Benko, who was a very, very good Italian. He's He was with me. He was 2-0 and with me. And he just couldn't stay over here. He was just homesick. And he went back to Italy. I think currently he's 7-1. Uh, and one. I think he's, he's, he's won seven. He's lost one. I think he's the Italian lightweight champion. So it's, it's fruition. It's, they come to the club and we do our best with them, you know. And that's... Let me just talk to you about that for a second, though. So, you know, for people that are more, you know, they watch predominantly professional boxing. Yeah. Let's just give them a little bit of an insight of what it is like to be uh, an amateur coach because you've named all those the, those people. You've had a massive, you know, impact on their career. A lot of them have turned over. A lot of them have done really, really well. You know, what does it take as an amateur coach? Because let's, uh, let's make it clear, you're, you're both. You do both. And we'll talk about yeah. the post side a little bit more. Sure, but sure. Just, just tell me what it's like to get, to, to have that sort of level of um, uh, that level, level of success, what does it take as an amateur coach? I think I think I, I sort of hit the nail on the head near the beginning of this of, of this interview where it's it's a being an amateur coach is finding the formula. From finding the formula with me, it was as I said, as a boxer, I watched I watched the coaches, you know, I studied the coaches. And the very, very first coach I ever had, uh, God bless him, was Bernie Smythe, who was Joe Smythe Jr.'s grand, grandfather. Joe Smythe obviously went on to being a pro from Finchley. Uh, his father, Joe Smythe Sr., was just finishing as I was starting. And his dad, first and foremost, taught me the fundamentals, the absolute basics. And he wasn't a bad pro as well. Mm-hmm. So it was, it's, it's, it's the attachment of not just being a coach, it's the, it's the camaraderie. It's being like a mentor. You're like a social worker. It's all those implications. This day and age now, there's too many people going out there rushing to get a level one after they've read a handbook and then all of a sudden they believe that they're the next best thing. I know everyone's entitled to an opinion. Okay, I do have my opinions about coaches, but I'm very old school and I'd, I'd, reser- I'd, I'd reservedly keep them to me unless someone asks me. And that's where I become a realist and tell someone the truth, not something that they want to hear, i.e. in this bubble. But from a coach's perspective, it's studying other coaches, mm. watching how they, from, from anything, from going into someone else's gym and watching how they, they plan, their, plan their session, from how they talk to an individual during sparring, how they, how they conduct themselves to, to parents and things like that. And I've, Jackie, I've been around. I've been around clubs, and I've heard parents and coaches like shouting and screaming in front of kids, and that's not the way forward. You know, you, you, there has to be a, a, an amount of respect. I regard me as a, co- excuse me, as a coach in my gym. I, I, one thing I won't tolerate is a parent talking to me, telling me something I already know, <laughs> or he led, he's led to believe that I don't know. Because I regard, and I've told them, and I've told them, I've told them, in my profession, i.e. the boxing, it's mm. my business. You don't see me going into your shop, sitting at your desk, <laughs> and telling you what's right and what's wrong. But from a coach's thing, I've, I, I think one of the most important fundamentals is obtaining the trust of that individual. I can have anyone come into that gym, Jackie, and you know what? You can look at them and probably roll your eyes and think, Pfft, what chance has he got? He'll come up and say, I want to box for England. We may know between us that he won't, but I will never, ever deny that boy, girl, that chance. And I, we, we, we have, the coaches we've got at the club now, we have such a good rapport amongst ourselves, but also with the boys and girls. There's not a dislike, you know, there's no hate, no dislike. When they come in there, they talk before they hit that gym floor. Once they're on the gym floor, mm. their souls belong to us. Once they've finished, then they can have their little selfies and their little pictures by the mm. bag and, and whatever. But we adhere to everything from safeguarding, child protection, everything. A lot of these coaches now, when they get these, oh, I want to be a coach, I just roll my eyes and think, yeah, do you know what it takes to be a yeah. coach? Yeah. 
you know. I said, so if anyone asks me, and um, I tried to phone the guy back. He, I, I don't know if you want me to he, want me to name him and, and, and his club. He approached me at the St Ives show and he said that I, I need to ask you a question. I went, yeah, fire away. And I was I was very much taken and humbled by it. And he said, uh, what's the secret of your success? It's hard work. <laughs> I, I said, uh, <laughs> relationship struggles, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, hard work, commit, sacrifice, I said, and the most important one is being damn right selfish. And when he said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, let's just say that when we use the term hashtag boxing family, mm. I genuinely regard them in my gym as my family, mm -hmm. which means that I have missed birthday parties and yeah. weddings and christenings. And I've had a bit of ear bashing and I've fallen out with me boys because I'm so, it's been so ingrained into me that I have to be at that show. Oh, sad, we've got a wedding next week. Sorry, no can do. We've got the quarterfinals of the, uh, the developments. I'll meet you there. And it never happens. And that's, that's, how it's, that's what it's taken for me to get to where I am or where I am going at the moment because I, I won't even say that I'm a complete coach. There's no such thing as the, a complete coach. Just like there's no such thing as a complete boxer. You're always learning. Yeah. I'm learning. I, I love, I love, when I, especially when I go abroad, I love watching... The, the workload of, of European coaches, foreign yes. coaches, and yeah. sitting there. The Eindhoven box cut, yeah. in the last few years, Jeremy's has had like the Mongolians over, the Sri Lankans, Thailand. I go in their changing room, but first and foremost, I'm a bit polite and say, Do you mind? I'm not here to spy on your boy. Do you mind <laughs> if I <laughs> sit here? Yeah, all right, fair enough, I am, but I'm just being <laughs> polite. Do you mind if I just come in and just, just watch no. you? Yeah. You know, I just want to see your manners. A few years ago, one of the most interesting facts that I saw there, whether it was the coaching staff at the time, was when Russia were there a few years back and they had a, a, a male and female team, they would warm up approximately an hour, hour and 15 before they were due to box. Mm. And it involved um, just jogging up and down, sidestepping, shadow boxing, no contact, no pads, nothing, mm. nothing at all. It's just shadow boxing, footwork, and it was just basically aerobic, anaerobic, just moving the mm. body, physiology more than anything else, you mm. know. And I, wow. And then you go into the next room and you've got the guy with the big pads, you know, asking for big blockbuster shots. And so everyone's different interpretation. Yeah. And and you as the as a boxer, it's especially over here in the club, it's what you find comfortable and who you find to be deemed comfortable with. So, that, how can I say? That's hard work, dedication, all those words that we all use, you know, those big words, hard work, commitment, dedication. It's, it's true. It's, it's, it's taken me a good part of 30 years to be where I am. You know, I've had a lot of success. I've had, I think I've had more beaten finalists in the elites or overall in championships than I have winners. But winners amount to, like, titles, national titles and everything. Must be in a 65 70 bracket so far, mm. and hopefully, with, with the current crop that I've got coming through now, I've got a great little schoolboy squad, schoolboy, schoolgirl squad, shall I say, juniors. It's just now like, uh, what can I say, an escalator? It's an escalator now to developing them and, 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 and just looking forward. Just, just can't wait to get back. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowbox UK, we'd love to see you, so please go ahead and subscribe now.